What is the only thing that we can see? Light is the only thing that our eyes can really see. During the day, the primary source of light is the sun. Other common sources are flames and lamps. Humans are capable of seeing the different objects that surround them as well as their images in a mirror or a pond. How can we explain the formation of double landscape in the depth of a lake? In this video, we will study the reflection of light. First, we will distinguish between two phenomena that light undergoes, scattering and reflection. Light is scattered when it falls on leaves and reflected when it falls on water surface. The microscopic view of the surface of leaf and the surface of water reveals the reason behind this difference. When light falls on a plain and polished surface, it is sent back in a definite direction. It is the phenomenon of regular reflection of light. Note that when all the rays falling on the smooth surface are parallel, the reflected rays are parallel as well. When light falls on a rough surface, it is sent back in all directions. It is the phenomenon of scattering of light, also known as diffuse of light. Note that even when all the rays falling on the surface are parallel, the reflected rays are not parallel. This is very nice, for it allows us to see the leaf from any direction or position. When light reflects, it doesn't reflect randomly, it obeys a law, the law of reflection of light. Direct a beam of light to a mirror. A light ray from this beam falls on the surface of the mirror. The mirror, which is a polished surface, reflects the light ray. We want to draw a schematic diagram of this situation. The symbolic representation of the mirror is shown. The ray that falls on the mirror from the source S is called the incident ray. The point of intersection between the incident ray and the plane mirror is called the point of incidence I, so the incident ray is SI. The reflected ray is sent back by the mirror, it is called IR. Note that SI is directed towards the mirror and IR is directed away from the mirror. From the point of incidence, draw the line IN, which is normal or perpendicular to the reflecting surface. We usually draw the normal line dotted because it is an imaginary line drawn for practical reasons. The angle of incidence I is the angle that the incident ray forms with the normal I. The angle of reflection R is the angle that the reflected ray forms with the normal at I. Using a protractor, we compare the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. We conclude that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, I equals to R. This is the law of reflection of light. Now let's check your understanding. A light ray strikes a plane mirror at point I. What is the point I called and what does it represent? I is called the point of incidence and it represents the intersection point between the incident ray and the plane mirror. Draw the normal to the mirror at point I. We place the set square with one of its sides on the surface of the mirror and the other side at point I. We can draw the normal I and Determine the value of the angle of incidence of the ray SI at I. The angle of incidence equals 90 minus 30 equals to 60 degrees. Deduce the value of the angle of reflection. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence equals to the angle of reflection, so I equals R equals 60 degrees. We place the protractor with its zero line at the normal. We measure 60 degrees with the normal. Then we draw a ray starting from the point of incidence I and directed away from the mirror. This is called the reflected ray IR.